What's going on, people? It's an early morning workout. I decided to switch up. It's been working out in the middle of the day, but since uh, so many things are going on, it's time to revamp that. And I really started thinking about some stuff because with my workout program, it's a transition. I've been working out for a while. And I was looking at my workout journal. I was going through it. I haven't missed a workout in going on four and a half months. Consistently hit getting it in. And that's the reason I'm calling this video the psychology of success. Because as I looked at what was going on this morning, because last night was a short night. I don't really sleep a lot, four, four and a half hours. If I sleep six hours, that is a lot. And let's see. This will be the dark video. <laughs> this will be the midnight video. I'll see if I can clean it up when I edit it. But I looked at the process. And the psychology of success is when you are getting started that building phase, that ugly, shaggy, rough and rugged period where things aren't crisp and clean. That hard phase, and that's where many people give up. I looked at what happened about, like I said, five months ago. I had the pinched nerve in this shoulder, the uh, left shoulder, and it seriously impacted bench, overhead press, over at press, I could do, but it would hurt. It felt like something was sliding. And I'm telling you, a pinched nerve is a trip. So I went ahead and rehabbed it. Kept working it out, kept working it out. Kept Because if you've ever been through real rehab, you know that shit hurts. Kept working it out. Then one day, I was pressing, and there was no pain. Using good form. No, this is just me, you know from being hurt before and going through the rehabbing process. And I looked at that beginning stage. I looked at the weight. I looked at the reps. What was really hard, which was everything, because when I was starting all over again, is it's not even my warm-up weight now. The deal with the psychology of success is you have to weather that ugly, the results aren't coming fast phase, the money's not coming in phase. You just have to really rock and roll and stick with it. And that's one of the reasons I believe so many people do not have the lives that they want because they do not work through that rough, rugged phase. It is coming. It's coming for your business and the psychology of success where real success it lies my success today was predicated on what happened five months ago if what happened five months ago did not happen I would not be doing what I'm doing today there's a direct line and correlation of effort strategy and consistency and discipline to what's going to happen with utilizing success principles because one of the first things on the psychology of success is mindset I was having a conversation with a friend last night and we were talking about my first book and he asked me a question he said what made you think you can do it and the answer was a little bit stunning I didn't think I could I just did it and I, I came up with a goal that a two year plan and I just sat down and it's like well I'm going to do it I didn't think I could do it. I just did it. I don't know if I can really explain that. When you become a process person or a person of action, you put more emphasis on doing. When I was miserable, broke, not doing well overall in life, I was a big talker big talker. And, you know, I talk a lot. I put out a lot of content. I'm always on YouTube doing these things. 
my talking and projection is maybe 10%, but I'm 90% action. I used to be 90% talk, 10% action, and the results were accordingly proper based on the ratio of effort and results. And if I could tell you anything about the psychology of successes, you must become a process driven person. And to have a process, there is action. Action is the greatest truth there is. There is no greater truth than action. Action tells you so much. It tells you what people are thinking, it tells you, like, you know, just to give you an example, people say their kids are the most important thing in the world to them, but they spend no time with them. Look at the action. Uh, I could help you out, man, but you know, I got stuff to do, and you see them on Facebook. Look at the action. The reality is, when you get to the point where you can accept the truth of what people think of you, what you think of yourself, what the world thinks of you, and go from that standpoint, you can begin to grow. As long as it's someone else's fault, as long as someone else has a problem, because I see a great deal of people putting up, well, if you don't like me, post, or if you weren't there for me, post. And I look at these people, and I'm being extremely judgmental. I will claim it. Most of these people have nothing to fucking offer. And I look at it. N have nothing to offer. They're not even mediocre. They're below mediocre with all of these projections and proclamations of, you know, uh, if you, you ain't, you know, you ain't there for me, buddy. You, you weren't there for me when I was in jail. You weren't there for me when I had that DUI. You weren't a good friend. And I submit to you, maybe if you were a better person who wasn't always in fucking trouble, maybe your friends would be there for you. I had a situation where I was in need and I made a conscious decision to not ask anyone for help. It was hard. It was brutal. It was it was very, very brutal. But when you put yourself in that process, you grow as a person and you become more self-reliant. You become more creative. But when you are one of those people, and one of my favorite posts that I love to giggle over, it brings out my inner girl, because I just giggle all over the place, is, well, you know, I'm going to delete my Facebook page, just letting you know. <laughs> I almost like, delete it. Go. <laughs> Those are pitiful cries for attention. Uh, when I used to play Mafia Wars, and when I trimmed my, stopped playing Mafia Wars, and I trimmed all those people. I, I did not do an announcement. I didn't put up a post. I just did it. And that is one of the things that you really have to start doing is doing, being accountable to action. Because I understand we live in the faux self-esteem era where people's like, well, you're the best thing since sliced bread. You're, you are my son. You are my daughter. You're fucking awesome. Uh, between the ages of zero weeks and, you know, maybe five or six, I'm with that. But at some point, accountability and truth must enter into the parenting paradigm. You cannot tell little Johnny, who's 15 years old, who's flunking out of school, that he's a great person. He's fucking up. Little Johnny needs to hear that he is fucking up. <laughs> Little Johnny is fucking up. Uh, I understand that you cannot hold someone in what I call stasis judgment. You know, they did something obscene at six and, you know, they're, ni they're 92. And you're like, remember when you were six and pooping your diapers? Remember when you threw the dart in Miss Hawthorne's eye? And they're 92 and they're still talking about that shit. I understand not holding that, but at some point there has to be a balance of accountability that, hey, you're fucking up. Hey, you're fucking up, little Johnny. Uh, these A, these, these, these Fs, or as uh, one of my teachers used to say, A's with a leg shot off of it, it's not acceptable. You have to let little Johnny know that. And many people have a problem with 
letting little Johnny know that because for some reason it may impugn his self-esteem. If little Johnny has any inkling of self-worth, little Johnny knows he's fucked up. And little Johnny's gonna fucking resent you for co-signing on that shit. It's gonna resent you because one day little Johnny's gonna grow up and little Johnny is gonna go out into the real world and the real world's gonna go, little Johnny, glad to meet you. But uh, looking at your profile here and uh, you're fucked up. It's better that little Johnny hears that from you and gets the proper guidance to move little Johnny into a better way of being a better way of acting and you know I, I'm really kind of caught up on a I have mixed emotions about this because I don't know at what age a person becomes unfixable I don't know if that exists I, just, I was in my 30s when I made the big change which is typically uh, a time that many people feel that you're done you're fixed you can't grow anymore it's a wrap I don't really feel that way. But once again, I was a torturous kid. I was an odd duck. I look at that and I wonder, are some people unfixable? <clears throat> are some people unable to adapt the psychology of success, the principles, and be able to move forward in life and be successful. I'm going to say for the sake of this video that I don't think anyone is unfixable. I do believe some people do not have enough personal investment and enough value on their personhood to make the effort to change. It's a little different than saying, hey, you don't have the capacity. It's just saying you don't have the will. I think that would be a more appropriate nomenclature for some people. Because I look at that, <clears throat> I look at people who are successful, I look at people who are trying to get to that next level in their life, whatever that next level may be, and they don't have a process. They don't want to weather that rugged, raggedy period that success is really born in. Many, too many people are facing the results as the attestment to success with little regard that without the process, there are no results. The process is more important than the results. Going back to what I was saying, looking at my journal, I keep a workout journal because it's very easy to get lost in the gym. I see people all the time who lift in the same weights. There is no progression. There's no scheme. There's no plan. And thus, there is no results because your body will adapt to stuff very, very quickly. And once it adapts, you can do the same effort or even a little bit more and not yield any additional results. But once again, if you're not tracking your results, you're not tracking your process, you're not looking at stuff, like in my journal, I was doing tricep press and because I'm on this new scheme, my elbows are sore as hell. And I went to do the, I was like, okay, I did one set, it was sore. I dropped the weight, just pumped it out, got a nice pump, got some blood to the elbows, and then I left it alone. It wasn't a will thing, it was more of a process thing. The process is if I get hurt or I be, my elbows become inflamed, I'm not working out and I'm missing workouts and I'm missing the workouts, my process halts. It is better to do something like that and be a placeholder for that position. It really isn't a placeholder because from the other exercises, I got tons and tons of benefit. So progress will still be go ongoing. But the whole thing is you've got to look at your life in those terms. <clears throat> you got to start looking at planning and strategy and action and really, really hunting in on the, the process because I know of a friend who started a business and they kind of dicked around with it for about four years and I, I consulted, you know, this is a friend. I saw that they were actually doing stuff. Do not send me emails saying, hey, you know, I want a free consult. I'm just putting that out there. Don't do it. If you want one, you will have to pay for it. But um, I did some stuff and he listened. He listened. 
and he, he, he got really amazing benefit for talking to me for about three hours. So much benefit that he actually paid me my hourly rate. Didn't ask for it. It was just, uh, I got, he was like, hey, how do I pay you? I was like, what do you mean? And I sent him a link. Well, actually, I didn't even send him a link. He He's like sent me an email. How did I pay you? And then like an hour later, I got paid. So essentially, if you really hone in on the process and if you really, really pay attention to the shaggy, rugged, rough, ugly, the hair all over the place stage of your business or your endeavor or whatever you're doing, and really realize that, okay, I'm becoming successful. Say that, you know, I'm becoming successful right now. That's where success lives. You, it does not live in the big house. It does not live in the nice car or whatever other accoutrements you think are of success. It doesn't live there. And that's one of the things that uh, the new 30 days to 2500 is going to have a higher level of accountability. And the last one had a really high level of accountability. It's going to be even higher because if you are really, really focusing on the process and knowing what success is and knowing what success is not, it puts you in a better situation to be successful because it's a process and it's a, it's a voyage. It's, it's not this destination because the industrial school complex teaches us to rush ahead and get stuff done to move on to the next whatever it is thing to get stuff done, to move on to the next thing to get stuff done. And it really doesn't give you the discipline or the insight to really be successful because you're operating on a paradigm that is not even built about success. It's built about accomplishing benign metrics in a loop. You go to school, you take this test, you get an A, okay that's nice you learn some knowledge okay does that what does that do for you where does that take you i've read so many people talk about this in the degree or to not have a degree conundrum and it's and they, they will always say that no what i learned in college is not what i'm using to build my business no what i learned in college is not the thing that pays me the money but it was so valuable I mean, you. how can you talk out of both sides of your mouth in the same Facebook post comment and not take it in that uh, it didn't work? If you had did the thing that made you the most money right out of high school, you would be making even more money now because you would have a longer uh, experience loop. You have a broader base of experience. And I, I just crack up when I see that. I just totally crack up when I see that. But remember, you know, the psychology of success is a process. It's a process. And part of the process is very ugly. It's very unclean. It's really nasty. It's very uncomfortable. It's hot. It's humid. Understand, when you're in that space, you're being successful. All right, this is Glendon, and I'll see you on the good side.